about to show y'all how the Chinese people actually served the God of the Jews before the Jews did. This man J-Rob on TikTok made a video that blew up and got millions of views. And what he does is explain how there's evidence of the Bible in ancient Chinese history, specifically from the Han Dynasty, which was 206 BC to 220 AD, which is the time of Jesus. And what they do is they look into the astronomy records during this time and they see the evidence during Jesus's birth and other evidence of the Chinese characters that support the Bible. Let's check it out. This is interesting. I'm excited to share this with you guys. I'm so glad you asked. I'm going to give you a quick list of a few, but then I'm going to show you all my favorite source. Y'all going to watch this whole video. Trust me. Alright, uh, for the record, that ain't Jesus, but uh, these people, uh, these people are ancient historians and other witnesses who lived around the time of Jesus and his disciples, as well as the early church, who were not Christian, but they actually confirmed many different aspects of what took place around that time. And they spoke against Christianity, but confirmed different aspects of what the Bible actually says. So what you got to do is you just got to study up on them, see what they said, and see what type of insights they give. All right, now I got that out of the way. I'm going to hit y'all with this heat. Meet Emperor Guangwu of the Han Dynasty. Now, I know y'all wondering, what this man know about Jesus? Nothing. He ain't know nothing about Jesus. But the historical records that was kept in his lifetime connected with the life of Jesus in a way that'll blow your mind. All right, so we know at the time of Jesus' crucifixion, Luke records that a darkness came upon the earth. Now, let's see what the emperor said about it. So in the Chronicles of Emperor Guangwu, he records, Yin and Yang have mistakenly switched, and the sun and the moon were eclipsed. The sins of all the people are now on one man, and pardon is proclaimed to all under heaven. The sins of all the people are now on one man. We got Guang Wu out here preaching the gospel in China. The suns were eclipsed. A darkness came on the earth. Whoo! Let's see what he's going to say. What you talking about, Guang Wu? And then it was also recorded, eclipse on the day of Guihai. Man from heaven died. Ooh, man from heaven died. I wonder who that was. All right, so what's the deal, man? They ain't had no Skype back then. China ain't nowhere near Jerusalem. Um, I know y'all wonder what's going on. So some of the best astronomers this world has ever known come out of China. I said astronomers, not astrologers. They got them too. So we should know that the heavens declare the glory of God, and God speaks to us through them from on high. Y'all remember the star that the wise men followed from the east to the place of Jesus' birth? Well, they seen it too. I seen it. Check out what they said. So this comment signified the old replacing the new covenant, maybe pause the read. So this is taken from astronomy records of the book of the Han dynasty. This is history. And the second month of the second year, the comet was out of Altair for more than 70 days. It is said comets appear to signify the old being replaced by the new Altair, the sun the moon and the five stars are in a movement to signify the beginning of a new epoch, the beginning of a new year, a new month, and a new day. The appearance of this comet undoubtedly symbolizes change. The extended appearance of this comet indicates that this is of great importance. Wow, so this is speaking on the birth of Jesus when the wise men followed that star. It's also recorded in the astronomy records of the Han dynasty that something new is coming. And we know that it is 2022 right now because of Jesus. Let's see what else he has to say. I don't know about you guys, but I want to see it. Back with a part two. About to show y'all how the Chinese people actually served the God of the Jews before the Jews did. If that make any sense. All right. So if y'all know the biblical history, there was a flood. And then after the flood, the Tower of Babel. At the Tower of Babel is where God confused the language and thus creating new languages. You should see evidence of that in history and not just the Bible. And since we're focused on the history of the Chinese people, let's see where theirs begin. You guessed it, a flood. According to the ancient Chinese record, Xu Jing, at the beginning of the very first dynasty in China, they was trying to figure out how to channel a flood, a big flood. 
I ain't saying that it was the same flood, but as you see that their history started with the Shia dynasty back in 2070 BC. And just 50 years before that, from the biblical history, the Tower of Babel was being built, which is again where God created new languages. The biblical flood took place around 2350 BC, which would indicate that after the Tower of Babel, when God split up the people, the Chinese people were dealing with the remaining water left over from the great flood. You know, it all just didn't disappear overnight. I hope y'all follow me because this is where it get interesting. If y'all watch some of my old videos, y'all know that in the ancient Hebrew alphabet, every letter has a symbol and a meaning attached to it. In a similar way, when the Chinese language was created, they used symbols or pictographs to convey a message. Each character and each word kind of tells a story. And some of that is still reflected in the language today. So this is how you write the word boat. And these are the symbols that make the word boat. Woo! Boat. A vessel with eight people. If you didn't know, in Noah's Ark, it was composed of eight people. This is super interesting. He's going to show us the Chinese characters and how even ancient Chinese characters in ancient China testifies to the Bible. Vessel, eight people. What do eight people have to do with the word boat? Wait, how many people are on Noah's Ark? Great. Now, this is the word create, and this is how that word was created. God spoke life to dust, and it walked. You could break that word down even further to God breathed into dust, and it became alive. And that's how you get the word talk or spoke. This is the current form of the word forbidden, and this is how it was created. God had two trees in the garden, and Adam and Eve couldn't eat one because they ate the other. Now, this is the word naked. All right, there's two ways to break that down. Man ate the fruit, so now he naked, or he need clothes because he ate the fruit and he naked. All right, my favorite. The only way to get me righteous is for a hand and a spear with a sheep to cover me. Bruh, I can speak the gospel in Chinese, y'all. And there's so much more where that came from. Now, these stories were just myths. Why was it so important for them to put it in their language? Let me introduce y'all to the God that they serve. So if we go to Exodus chapter 6, we know that God at one point revealed himself as El Shaddai. Well, if you would have spoke Cantonese, they would have known him as Shangdai. And he was the very first God that Chinese people were ever known to serve. They'd like to follow for more. So I can't verify 100% that the God of the Bible is the very first God that the Chinese people ever served. But what I have verified is the characters, how the Chinese characters testify to the Bible. Come on, tell me Jesus isn't real. Tell me the Bible isn't real. God knows exactly what he's doing. 